This is an Israelite Jewels recording. Chapter 16 The story of Moses after freeing the Hebrews from slavery to Egypt. It was then, at the crossing of the sea, under the cloud of the mighty God, that the nation of Israel, together with the Egyptians who had forsaken their land to serve Jehovah, underwent a baptismal process in me, Moses, through the cloud and of the sea, and became thus the children of covenant under the laws which the Lord God would give to me, for the purpose of teaching the children of Israel to live their commandments, as being a united people, which had just left behind the idolatry for the purpose of worshipping only the one true God, under the unity of the church that had been organized on the day of the Passover, before Israel left Egypt. Regardless of where they were, they would all be one in the knowledge and subservience to the covenants made by Jehovah with the nation of Israel, from before they left Egypt, when all shared the Passover, fourteen days after the first new moon appeared in the heavens, which should be strictly observed according to the covenant established for liberation of the people of Israel, prefiguring then, that the Israelite nation, by observing the commandments given by me, Moses, would prefigure the church of the Lamb of God in all dispensations. For how much this one Paschal day, to be observed strictly fourteen days after the first new moon of the first month Abib, is to be kept in perpetuity among the people of the covenant, because it represents the liberation of his people from the slavery of Egypt. However, it is also the first day that God organized his church from the beginning of time, and only on this day does God redeem it, whenever necessary, in every predetermined time by him before the foundation of the world. This being the terms predetermined by God to organize his church properly on the face of the earth, just as it occurred on the day of the first Passover observed by the Hebrews in Egypt on the fourteenth day of the month Abib. However, the day when God established his church in the days of Adam, he set a fixed and unchanging day for the children of men, regardless of the position of the moon in the heaven, to which he set out in all ages to properly organize and structure his church on earth and which by chance to occur on the fourteenth day of the lunar calendar among the people of Israel in Egypt, making this day for to be remembered for they, of generation after generation, but which for God, does not change the fixed day decreed by him and is only begotten before the foundation of the world and for all eternity. It happened then, over time, because of the murmurings of all the congregation of Israel, that the disbelief of the people displeased the Lord in view of all that he had done hitherto. And for this reason the Lord allowed our enemies to make war against us, to once again manifest to the people of Israel from whence their strength and their help came. And it came to pass in the land of Rephidim, that the Amalekites encamped about to attack the children of Israel. In view of this, I, Moses, called Joshua and I commanded that he choose some men for the battle against the Amalekites, for how much I said to Joshua that I would be on the top of the hill according to the command that God had given me, in which I would hold the rod of the Most High in my two hands, while my arms would be in the high. And thus said the Lord to me, Just as I live, if you keep your arms outstretched over your head, so shall thy victory be against Amalek tomorrow. And Joshua did as I had told him, for how much I, Moses, Aaron, and Ur, we climbed to the top of the hill. But, being me advanced in years, I could not bear to remain for a long time with my arms outstretched over my head with a heavy stick in my hands. And as soon as I lowered my arms to rest, Amalek was immediately to take over the battle, but when I lifted up the rod, Israel prevailed against the Amalekites. At this, Aaron and Ur interrupted me, saying, It is seen by us that your hands Moses, are too heavy to keep your arm raised high please let us help you. But behold, it had not been said by God that I might have help, and so I rebuked them at first. But there came a time when I could no longer raise my hands to the top, and my legs could no longer stand, when Aaron and Er came to sustain me, and they took a stone, and put it under me, and Aaron and Er maintained my hands raised high, Aaron on the right side, and her on the left side, and so my hands stood firm until sundown. As a result, Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And it came to pass, when Jethro my father-in-law came to me, Moses, and my sons and my wife, Zipporah, and the wilderness to the mountain of God, 
where he was encamped, and as soon as I saw them, I immediately went out to meet my father-in-law, and bowed, and kissed him, and after asking each other about their well-being, we went into my tent, where I told my father-in-law what Jehovah had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians because of Israel, and all the tribulations that passed in the way, and how the Lord delivered us out of the hand of Amalek with the help of Aaron and her. And it came to pass, upon my resistance to accept the help of Aaron and her, that the Lord said to me the next day, It is not good that I should stand alone in the presidency of church of my firstborn, for how much you need support, just as I showed you in the battle of Rephidim when Aaron and her helped you with high hands. Behold now, I'll let you know, Moses, that there would be no victory if you had not allowed Aaron and her to sustain you at that moment. In a similar way I tell you. Behold, the time has come for you to organize my church according to the old order of Enoch, which has been in existence since the days of Adam, for how much my gospel is ever the same, being eternal and unchanging. My gospel, therefore, must contain in itself all the offices of my priesthood, according to the old order of Enoch, even as I will make thee known through my servant Ruel, thy father-in-law. And Jethro, when he heard these words of mine, behold, rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, and said, Blessed be the Lord who delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hand of Pharaoh, and, behold that now I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods, for in that in which the Egyptians exalted their gods, the Lord overcame them. And it came to pass on the morrow, that my father-in-law saw all that I did unto the people, and said, Behold, it is not good for you to continue like this, but surely you must do as God has revealed to you. But hearken unto the voice of him whom God hath appointed thee to hear, and I will counsel thee, and God shall be with thee. Be you the leader of the people before God and teach them the statutes and the laws of their church, and make known unto them the way in which they should walk, and the work which they ought to do, and of thy people Moses, seek out able men, fearful of God, men that cherish the truth, who hate covetousness, and designate them under your hands to offices of elder, each according to what the Spirit of God shall direct thee, and thou shalt give them functions in the physical administration of the people of God through the lesser priesthood and give the positions of spiritual administration of the congregation of Israel through the greater priesthood. And since the people are very numerous, appoint officers in the priesthood of Melchizedek to take care spiritually of the congregation, which you will call of rulers, yea, rulers of a thousand, rulers of a hundred, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten, that they may judge this people at all times, but every serious cause, bring it to you and every little cause they will judge according to the knowledge that they will obtain through you. And it came to pass, that I, Moses, did all that my father-in-law had said. Beginning with him, when I ordained him to the position of patriarch, for he was already high priesthood. After ordaining him to the patriarchal office, I summoned Aaron, as my immediate counselor, because he stood beside me in the battle of Amalek, holding one of my arms and as soon as I called the second counselor in the presidency of the Church of the Lamb, her, for remaining on my left. Representing thus, each in his calling, my right arm and my left arm in the spiritual administration of the covenant people. Over time, I have chosen many capable men from all over Israel, and I set them for heads over the people, rulers ones of a thousand, rulers of hundred, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten and they judged the people in small things according to the law of God. But the great ones left for me, Moses, to judge. I appointed twelve apostles afterward, whom I sent to the promised land to return to the covenant people with glad tidings. I also appointed seventy according to the ancient order established by God from the beginning of the world in the likeness of the heavenly order, in common accord with the church of the firstborn. And so I instituted among the people of Israel in my day, the Church of the Lamb of God, with all their offices properly organized, 